Welcome back, everybody. Hey, it's the Buka Boys Podcast, and I'm DVO. And I'm Daylo. Welcome back for 2019. It's the first episode of the year. Season 2. <laughs> Season 2. There we go. I like that. So you have a good time on New Year's? I was pretty much laid out by midnight. Were you, you did not like reach midnight? I did reach midnight, but I was pretty damn tired. Okay. I, we were at a friend's house having dinner. Um, we didn't want to do much because I'm still healing and my wife is still healing. So we just had dinner at a friend's and it was about 11 o'clock and we couldn't make it to midnight. We went home. You went home? <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, I was getting pretty tired by like one in the morning. I was, I was already pretty tired. So I, I get it. I totally get it. So if anybody's watching on YouTube, you'll notice my face is bare. No more, no more beard or food. I thought you were going to grow it out. It, it's not full enough. Okay, it's, well, it looks pretty goofy when you can see through it. If you re rewind, I th think that's what I said. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so it's I'm, as if I know you or something. I know, right? Maybe what I'll do is I'll continue to use the beard oil and, and stuff. Okay. With with stubble throughout the year and see if that helps bring out a fuller beard, and then I'll try growing hmm. it out when I get a uh, manly enough. That doesn't sound right to me. Using oil to grow facial hair. Well, what they say the oil does is uh, soften your skin up enough to where multiple hairs can come through the pore. Okay. So instead of like one single hair, it'll be like four hairs. So it's just a thicker, fuller beard. So you need to moisturize. Moisture. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, we just went. We went to a, a gala uh, for New Year's Eve. Oh, and from the Filipino event yeah we went down there it was a good time they had entertainment and food and and then we ended up going to my wife Edna's family's house they were they were having a get together and and as uh, so we went we met up over over there and and had some more food and then rang in rang in the new year nice how late did you stay up I I left like I said probably around one my wife actually and my daughter wanted to stay and I left because I was getting pretty tired so I'm, I'm leaving I'm tired and, uh, and, uh, in their house, only have one bathroom and I had to go to the bathroom really bad. And I said, like, I'm not going here. So I'm going home. <laughs> Everyone's dirty asses have touched that seat. So I said, uh, I'm, I'm heading home. So I, I, I went home and picked Where them up in the morning. Your ass touching the seat. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I went home and, and, uh, I went and picked them up in the morning. They slept over there. Your daughter slept over there too. Yeah. So I went back. So I actually had... The whole three levels, king size and king size bed, all to myself. So excellent. Was, I did not mind that at all. <laughs> I was okay with that. So yes, it was a good time. Let's go on a tangent here about dirty asses on toilet seats. Do you ever do you ever shit in public? Like for people watching? <laughs> you don't just sit there and shit while people watching you. <laughs> so, so you're talking about like the uncomfortable of of a public restroom? They're yes, talking about where. You get the bubble guts, and there's you no to way go. you're gonna make it home, and you're shitting somewhere where other asses have been sitting on it. I mean, I've gone to, I've used public restrooms, yes. Yeah, I stopped caring. I shit everywhere now. <laughs> on the floor, <laughs> on the floor, <laughs> on tables, <laughs> wherever. <laughs> I don't care about your health. I'm shitting right here. <laughs> and you're gross. <laughs> Well, with a new year comes new usually shits. new year <laughs> resolutions. <laughs> and how often are those broken? Every year. <laughs> like the first two weeks, maybe? Or by the second month. I, I think some people haven't even started there. They're like, I'm going to do this. And they have, it's like the, what, like the first week still in January. No one's done anything, I bet. True that. Most people. So I know there's, like, there's always like the two biggest. One's always centered around um, health and fitness. The other one's always centered around money. Right. So um, so I know you want to talk about like health and fitness. Yeah, let's because talk about Because the some... gyms are going to be packed for the first five weeks of the year. Right. It is insane. Every yeah. time the new year hits, it's a shit show for a few months. About, I would say it when it starts getting warm out. As soon as it starts getting warm, that's when you start seeing the people taper off. Then they're out of the gym. Okay. But during you that time... You think it goes all the way to like April? Yeah, it does. No, I see. I already see like February, March, it's already tapering well, off. Well, you'll see the taper off, but you'll see in about summer when all the... Everyone just kind of just stops. Okay. And so all the New Year's resolutioners are just like, it's 
warm on the tried like exercises outside, but they don't. They never Oh, do. yeah, good point, right? <laughs> they use the outside as an excuse. And then they just end up getting fat. And then they just continue it through the holidays. <laughs> and then they're like, well, it's the holidays now. <laughs> That's always been my It's excuse. okay now. <laughs> so but, let's talk about some gym etiquette then. Yeah. The people in the gym. Because obviously it's going to be crowded. And there's, there's some etiquette that needs to be taking place. Because some people don't realize that. And they just start going to the gym. And they're hogging machines and space. They're basically hogging space. Yeah. It drives me nuts when I see somebody hoarding... Like the free weights, the the, the, the dumbbells, the, uh, dumbbell rack. So they'll grab. Yeah, it'll be during like busy, busy times. Right. And they'll grab like five different pairs of dumbbells and oh, store so you're, they're, it. They're hoarding them. the the dumbbells. Yes, you're they're okay. hoarding it because they're gonna eventually use them. But when they want to use them, they don't want anyone else to use All them. All right. So I got pet peeve on dumbbell racks. So continue yeah. with this. So what they do is they'll take five different pairs of yes. dumbbells, take them to their station, and won't even use four of them for half an hour. They'll just be sitting there. And so they take the longest them. set uh, rest in between? Yeah. Yes. And they're just hoarding them. Or the people that uh, they're doing back rows and think that the dumbbell rack is their personal space when there's they're standing over like the most used dumbbells. Yes. Like the, the 25s to the 45s. Like that is the most used section of dumbbells right. and that that's kind of goes along with my pet peeve of you know they want like let's just say 30 pound dumbbells so they grab them and they stand right there where they grabbed them off the rack and then just and then they do lifting. their thing in front of like they, blocking everybody's yeah so i i myself i hate that shit and i personally bug the shit out of those people doing it what do you do so they're standing there in front of the weights I won't need those weights, but I know some people do, and they're just too shy to stop them. Okay. So I'll go over there, and I'll just, like, put my... I'll just totally disrupt their workout and say, excuse me, excuse me, and push them aside and grab oh, them. Oh, okay. Or, while they're doing it, I'll come reach in between them so they can't do a full rep, and I'm standing <laughs> right there. You put your arm across there? Then? Yeah. And I'll, I'll just start reaching for stuff and make them move to the side. Uh -huh. What drives me nuts is they don't get the hint. And instead of backing Most up... Most of the time they don't. They'll slide to the side and block other weights. So I'll keep moving, <laughs> acting, acting like I need to get these weights Yeah. until they finally get the hint. It drives me nuts. I think we all, all of us gym rats need to get together and then breathe on their neck and say, <laughs> you're in the way. <laughs> and just hover over them until they move. Like, like really, like, take step, grab your dumbbells and take five steps back. Or, or the people that don't put their stuff away when they're done. They just leave them on the floor yeah, or like something. Yeah, like the people that, the, the asshole that hoarded the five different pairs of dumbbells is now going to leave all five pairs on the oh, floor yeah, and, okay. and walk somewhere else. Or Those, their plates or whatever. Yeah, people that leave shit in the most inconvenient places and then just leave it. Yep. Like that drives me nuts. So, so we're talking about uh, people hogging the racks... Mm -hmm. Leaving their weight. Yep. What else? How about taking the longest rest in between two like we were talking oh, about? Oh, yeah. When they're using... Like on a machine or a certain weight. Yeah. So one thing that falls on the gym's fault is when they have machines that go out of order and they never fix it. Yeah. Right? So there's, you know, say they have like three machines for one body, body workout, but uh, two of the machines are broken. So now there's just one machine for that one body part. Well... There's somebody on it, and they're yeah they're taking ten minutes between sets because they're texting, they're texting or on social media yeah or they're trying to just like talk to the hot chick over here right they're just taking their sweet ass time, so no hugging equipment, but a lot of times I'll go up to those people I'll be like hey how many sets you got left because I'm gonna take it from you bitch yeah because it makes them <laughs> makes them well hopefully it makes them move. Faster. Yeah. Hopefully they, they get the tint. So what about uh, supplements? Do you take supplements? Wait, we're not done yet with the etiquette here. Oh, okay. What else do you have that pisses you off? People that are extremely loud. Oh, the yellers? The yellers or the grunters. Yeah. Listen, it's monkey. unnecessary. You need to... <laughs> it's okay to, to have a little grunt and get a little yeah. extra push. It's, it's the excessive yelling. It's the gorilla ah! yelling. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> each, each exhale, they have to go... Ah! <laughs> that's so, funny. so that's annoying as hell especially when you can hear it through your headphones yeah yeah and then, then they and then they drop the weights because they, they just finished their that that rep and then 
boom, let go and let it slam. Like, it depends. listen to all that weight. It depends. If it's like the uh, the squat rack, or not this really squat, but the, the dumbbell, or not the, what am I trying to say? Deadlift, sorry. Okay. When they're doing deadlifts and they drop that, I but can those understand are, Those should that. be rubber weighted, though. Sometimes. They only have so many rubber weights. At or they should be on the rubber on mat. Vasa. They only have so many areas to do it at, and so if somebody's doing it on the deadlift section with the rubber weights and you want to do deadlifts and they're going to spend the next hour on there then you're SOL and you're going to have to use the regular weights and do it somewhere where it's not all rubberized but I can understand the dropping it on your last set because those that especially when you're going heavy when I see somebody drop it and they're only doing one plate that's when it's like come on big guy (laughs) settle down big guy but when you're when you're deadlifting 500 plus and you're, you know, doing five reps and the last one's killer and you finally, you get it up and you just drop it. I can see that. It's the guys that are doing like a, like free weights chest. Like they're doing chest flies with okay. dumbbells. And, right, they just let it go. Yeah, and they're doing like 40 pound dumbbells. And then they get done, they're, ah! and then they drop it. <laughs> and they break oh, the dumbbells. Oh, you know what's happened to me in high school? Somebody next to me was doing some peck flies with dumbbells, dropped the weight. It bounced on the floor and smashed into my big toe. And yeah. my big toe exploded. Well, high school, there's a lot of not knowing what the hell you're doing. And that there's a lot of learning going on in high school. When it you comes don't to, drop weight when you're you next don't, to somebody. You don't. But being That's in high school, I can see though. a dumb kid doing that. I, can, I don't trust kids at the gym. When I see kids at the gym now, like straight out of high school, I stay clear from those dumb asses. Cause they try to, they want to match. They outdo it. each other, yeah. and then they get rowdy, and then they drop shit, throw shit, and act like they're funny as hell. But yeah. that's because we're speaking from experience. Yeah, because that used to be us <laughs> like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you ask me if I take any supplements. Yeah, supplements. Well, you guys tell us too. Uh, respond. What are some of your gym pet peeves? All right, so so hit up on our social medias, Buco Boys Podcast. Or Buco Boys Podcast at gmail.com. We want to know some of your gym pet peeves if we missed them. Or if you got some good stories of some Oh, idiots. you know what? I, I just thought of another pet peeve. Okay. The creepers. The gym creepers. They're like spying on girls? Yeah. The, they're like, they're not even working <laughs> out. They're just, just watching. taking up machines watching girls or guys. Because <laughs> girls do it too. There's some girl creepers out there. Yeah. But... The creepers at the gym just taking up space, not even lifting, and they're just being creepy. So texting, social media, or creeping out. Yeah. And it's noticeable, people. It's noticeable. Everyone knows what you're doing. Yeah. Everyone can see how creepy Because they want to do it, but they are, <laughs> they have etiquette not to. And so they know what morals. you're doing. They have morals. <laughs> they know how to use peripheral vision. Exactly. <laughs> <Fucking> weirdos. <laughs> so I, I don't take uh, many supplements. If I feel like I haven't... Like reach a certain amount of uh, nutrients for the day, then maybe I'll like take a protein shake. Or if I know I, I, I'm going to be busy and not not get enough like food, then I, then I will. But I, I hardly take supplements. Mostly if I do, it's going to be a multivitamin or, or a protein powder. Which is good because when you think about supplements, some people think the more money they spend, the better they're going to look. True. Which is not... Or name brands, who they want to yeah. get hooked on the name brands of supplements. Well, you think about what a supplement is, is it's it's made to just supplement your diet. Yep. So if you're missing out on protein for the day, then you supplement that with a protein shake. Yep. If, uh, if you feel like you don't have enough energy that day, then you supplement that with a pre-workout. You don't, like, supplements are not necessary. They're mainly made to supplement your diet. Yep. If you're not... Good point. If you're not reaching a certain thing that day or whatever, it's just, it's a, just a little bit of a push or just to get you there, but it's not made to be made up like your everyday diet shouldn't be made up of supplements. <laughs> right. Do you, I mean, do you, do you take, what do you take? If so, you take any. I'll take a pre-workout depending on the time of day I'm going to the gym. If I'm going to go to the gym in the morning, then pre-workout because you're tired and it just kind of gives you that boost to get up. But if I'm going to go to the gym later in the day, then I will not take a pre-workout because then I'll never get to sleep. <laughs> yeah, good point. Both from experience. So I, if, if, I, uh, if I feel really tired, I, I usually just have some green tea. Well, what's funny too is, so pre-workouts are kind of a new thing. I would yeah. say within the last six years. 
Yeah. And back in the day when we would work out, there was no such thing as that. It was just no. black coffee. Yeah. If that. If if you even thought of that. <laughs> I but did. I used to do drink black coffee. I would do... Uh, I wouldn't take anything. Back in the day, it was just... Uh, um, Testosterone. No, not even anything like that. It was just... Uh, oh, yeah, you have low T. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I do. But no, what's crazy is ever since I said that on the first episode, it's been popping up on my Facebook feed. <laughs> low Commercials tea, for low, low tea, tea pills. Yeah. And I've never had that issue before. And I've never even Googled it before, but I've said it on the first episode and all of a sudden it's popping up on my Facebook feed. <laughs> They're watching. They're listening to everything I say. It's probably important to them. That's but funny. but anyways, um, I never used to take a pre-workout, but now I'll take one here and there. To, it does kind of give you a pump. It gives you a pump and gives you some, some juice flowing. But other than that, it was just a multivitamin, and then I would supplement some protein here and there. I take my I actually take my wife's multivitamins. She gets the gummy ones. Oh yeah. So I'll just pop. Are you are you growing boobies? Nope. <laughs> Wait, am I? Nope. <laughs> I am. <laughs> but I'm not taking anything. They're not, they're not women's though. They're just like generic general ones. But they're the ones from Costco. The gem, the gummy ones. And I was mm. like, hey. So I've candy. heard a, a lot about multivitamins going to waste. When you take a multivitamin, you're actually, your body's not even processing a lot of it. You just wait, like, a lot of it just gets pissed out. You gotta, you gotta check it out. So uh, most multivitamins nowadays, like GNC, you take them twice a day. That way it gets evenly distributed throughout the day. So you don't waste it. So you'll take like one in the morning and then like one in the afternoon. And then just kind of, and then it'll kind of go out throughout the day. So this this year, once uh, I'm almost done healing, I'm off the meds now, and it's just a little bit of a tightness feeling in that incision area. But once that's gone and I start hitting the gym, I'm really not going to take that much supplement. It's a, it's kind of a waste of money, especially protein. So especially if you're if you're if you're eating right. Yeah. And, I mean, get, if you're a football player and you need a lot of protein and a lot of carbs that it definitely helps to get you know quick 30 20 grams in a, in a in a in one cup of little cup of powder right and but for most time, people that's not doing that yeah for the your, most part your basic diet might be okay when i would take a protein shake is because i was not going to eat something after the, my workout and so instead of starving myself i would just hurry and drink a protein shake until to last me until my break at work yeah so, because I was supplementing. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But um, but now, with our making our own schedules and everything, I can kind of plan f- for food and and eat throughout the day without having to take protein shakes or multivitamins. They'll just be able to get it all from actual food. I usually pack protein bar because sometimes I'm just running all over the place on from appointment to appointment. And I might be out four, five, six hours and I'll just be starving in between. So, I'll just throw a... You can kind of carry a protein bar in my in my bag just in case that happens. I, I want to avoid hitting up, you know, McDonald's and things yeah. like that in, in in between. One of my favorite foods that I really enjoy eating, and I look forward to it, um, in, in my daily like I eat this almost every day is either um, a quarter of butternut squash or a, or a sweet potato. I love it, which is good. Yeah, those I mean that, those are like good fiber helps you. Sh- oh man, out. good fiber. Special K, vitamin K, <laughs> um, uh, g- good carbs too, good fat. So, so one thing, uh, one I, I so this isn't my first time getting fat and getting fit again. <laughs> so one I'm thing, I, the roller coaster of our lives. What is called? <laughs> one I call thing, the Van Otten gene. <laughs> no kidding. So one thing I do is uh, I'll cut out processed sugars. Okay, so any processed sugars, and then I'll just drop my carbs down and uh, stay away from like processed carbs, and uh, I'll I'll limit my carbs and limit. Pretty much, I'll I'll just kind of like portion out what I'm eating, and and then uh, just stop eating all the candy and, and crap food. But that usually gets me a jump start, and usually gets rid of that first ten pounds right away. That, that first 10 pounds yeah. always just sheds off within that first week. And that's like a good jump start. And then um, I'll also be juicing a lot of like fruits and vegetables and blending. But uh, but by doing that, that's a good little jump start eating clean. And then from there, I can kind of just maintain. And then hitting the gym hard and sweating it all out and building muscle. 
usually takes about five, six months to get there. Okay. Well, the good thing is, is uh, us specifically too, is, you know, our bodies are made with good muscle memory. So even if you haven't been in a while and you kind of let it go and then you start getting back in, into it, your body remembers and starts building it pretty quick too. Yeah, even without hitting the gym in months, people will still tell me I look pretty good. Like, oh, you've been hitting the gym? Like, no, not for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, you know, another thing too is, is how strong your mind is just kind of like kind of thinking about your muscles growing and thinking about shedding fat actually helps like envisioning yourself and, and, and looking in the mirror and saying, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to start trimming. It actually starts helping, which is odd. Yeah. Well, yeah. But you put your mind to it, your mind starts telling your body to do things. I mean, yeah, mind over matter. You should start telling your mind what it is your goals are and uh, let your mind start telling your body to melt that fat away. It's true. It's crazy. It's crazy how it does that. I actually was, I, I was, it wasn't really a study, but it was uh, more of a, a factual, it was like, it was like a compilation of facts. And one of those facts were, you know, your mind can help you lose weight just by kind of thinking of it. But also, I noticed it with myself with, with, with muscle gain, too. So I actually would notice that myself with muscle gain, if I felt like I wanted my shoulders wider, I wouldn't really change up my workout. But while I was working on my shoulders, I would concentrate them on, on them more. And I don't know if it was just a mind thing, but slowly I started noticing my shoulders getting wider. Yeah. Just by paying more attention to it and focusing on it. I don't know if it was just... They were getting wider, and it was nothing I did differently. It's but true. Maybe just focused on it. I don't know. It was weird. It's weird for sure. And then I know you said something about jeans. I got it at Ancestry.com for Christmas. Oh yeah, my wife got it for you. Yep. And I sent that in. I'm excited to so get the what results. Did you like swab your mouth or something or what? Well, you're Pee supposed in a to. Cup? I did, <laughs> and I come to find out you're supposed to just spit in it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't pee in it. No, you just spit in the cup. There's a little line that tells you to spit up to this line. Okay. And so they say, you know, no food or water or anything for half an hour. And then after that half an hour, you could spit in that and then seal it up. There's a little solution in there. When you seal it, it, it spills into your spit and you shake it up and then you mail it in. Interesting. Where does it go? Where do you ship it to? Somewhere here in Utah. Oh, really? Ancestry.com is here in Utah. I think it's an orange. Oh. Orm. Okay. They give you like a time frame of results, six to eight weeks, and then they just mail it to you. Um, I think it's just going to be emailed to me. Okay. Oh, very I think they'll do both. I think they'll email okay. and mail it to me. Very interesting. So, uh, so that, I wonder if they, I wonder if they started in Utah. That's kind of cool. Well, the ancestry dot com did because it was like a an LDS thing. I think. That's oh, for people to kind of backtrack there. Okay. Yeah, the genealogy. It does make sense. All right. Got it. But okay. I'm excited for that. That's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, so people, we go to the gym, get your workout in, but don't, don't be dicks. Don't, yeah, don't be dicks. Think about other people, dicks, and be careful spending your money on tons of supplements. Yeah, the more money you spend, is it going to make you stronger, you dummies? It's going to make your wallet broke. <laughs> yep. What else do we have? Um, nice. Oh, we just saw a trailer just now that the Stranger Things 3 Ooh, is going to come out three. July 4th. Yes. I'm super stoked for that. I am way stoked about that. Can't wait. I met, I did tell you, I met the little cleft lip boy. No. From Stranger Things. No, the one with no teeth? Yeah, Gatton. He doesn't have cleft lip. He has something, he has something with his, his palate is messed up. But yes. he got it fixed. Yes. But uh, we met him at Comic Con, my daughter and I. Okay. Is he short? Yeah, he's a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like short for his age? Or... He was sitting he, down. He looks kind of short for yeah. his age, though. Uh, yeah, he does. But he was sitting down. So... All those kids are pretty dang cute, though. You're sick. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Kidding. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think they did, all... I think they did a good job. They did a really at, good job. At, the, at those ages, they did a really good job. And then the, the girl that plays Eleven... We didn't get to meet her at Comic Con, but we watched her panel. Uh huh. She was she's entertaining. She's uh, yeah. She was two. two uh, this was two years ago too, and she was still like, she was uh, she spoke really well and she was funny. But it, it's weird in the news with between her and Drake. What's going what? on there? I don't even know what you're talking. About. You don't know? No. So her and Drake are like buddy buddy. Well, he tries to be buddy buddy with everyone. 
He tried so hard but to it's be so relevant. Weird. He, how the age difference, and all of a sudden he's trying to be buddy buddies with her. And she was talking about how, oh, I, he gives me boy advice when I like boys. I can talk to him about it. Um, well, Drake's a creeper for sure. Yeah. Because he, he stalks girls until they go out with him. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean, just listen to that song, that Kiki. Like, that whole thing sounds really weird when you listen to the words. I actually he never listened to He just loves all these girls. He just he sounds like a stalker. He is. He is <laughs> the whole song sounds stalkerish. He's he does he tries so hard to stay relevant. Like that's why he he, he tries to get involved in the basketball. He's just he's he's always a super fan, a basketball super fan. Runs out on the court and he acts like whoever was MVP that game. He acts like he's their most proudest girlfriend. I'm I'm <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm not a big Drake fan. I don't I don't like his voice when he raps. Like his normal talking voice sounds fine. His rapping voice I don't like. Yeah, he changes it up really weird. I don't like it. Because he's got to sound like this when he raps. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like the guy. So, yeah, I've heard that. But uh, I've seen Mill Millie Brown on a few talk shows. She's, she's, pre she's pretty funny. She's going to be super cute when she gets older. Uh huh. Hopefully she keeps her head right. Yeah, she doesn't turn into one of those uh, strung out actresses. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Netflix, that new Bandersnatch movie, the Black Mirror movie. Uh huh. So have you watched any of the Black Mirror episodes? I watched maybe the first two and I couldn't get into it. And I That's stopped. how I felt. I couldn't fall. Like, it just, it was like a, what was it, like a Twilight Zone for millennials? Oh, good point. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, something like that. And uh, is it British? Yeah, well, the first two I saw were, so I, I, was, I'm, I wasn't sure if it was or not, but the yeah, first so two I, I saw were. I think it is were. a British Netflix show and it's kind of like the Twilight Zone. But yeah, I couldn't get into it. So I couldn't get into it. I'll I'll hear references about it, like, oh, that sounds like an episode of, of Black Mirror, and I know kind of that it's kind of like a Twilight Zone ish, but I never actually took the time to to watch the episodes that I because when I did try, I just wasn't interested. Yeah. Um. But that Bandersnatch movie, I actually started to watch it. Oh, I, did you? Okay. So it's uh, so the movie's kind of based on this kid making a video game based on a book. And it's okay. one of those choose-your-own-storyline books. I love those books. So you remember that. Yes. It's like, which choice do you want to make? Yeah, go to page go to 12 page or, or go to page 18. So in the movie, you have to interact with your remote control, just like the book. Uh, uh, opportunity arises, and you've got to choose either take it or not. And then you choose which side. You choose, hit the arrow on the remote, and then it plays hmm. that storyline along with that. And if it's the wrong choice... It'll tell you, you made, like, something bad will happen, and it'll tell you you made the wrong choice, and it'll start doing a recap of everything that led up to that choice. Okay. And then it tells you to make the the choice again, and now, okay, 50-50 chance, got it wrong the first time, <laughs> didn't make the right yeah. one. Yeah, interesting. Um, so then you make the right one, because kind of like in the book, when you choose the wrong one, you have to go back, you backtrack, and have to recap where you went. <laughs> my, my hand was still there, I didn't... <laughs> if you were smart, you folded the page, so you didn't have to do that. I kept my finger there. <laughs> But, so it does, it kind of does that along with the movie. If you make the wrong choice, it recaps, and then you have to make the right one. <laughs> but I heard, so I never made it past, I think I'm like 20 minutes in. So I still need to finish the movie, but uh, I heard there was like five different endings to this. Interesting. Because of the way you can the make options you yeah. can pick. So I heard they, rec they filmed like five different endings that you can choose. And, and all together, I think there was like 60-something choices i guess after it's all said and done you can there's like 60 different paths you can make i wonder if this will start a trend that catches on or if it's just gonna be i wonder if netflix is trying to do something here beyond this black mirror episode if they're trying interactive to TV. more interactive tv i'm wondering how it will catch on just kind of trying to think i don't I don't see it catching on so I can, big. I can see it being beneficial for people who have short attention spans, who like 90% of people play on their phones while they're watching TV. Okay. So this kind of forces you to pay attention. Okay. Because I, I know that's why I, I didn't end up finishing it is because I really have to pay attention to this and I really can't pay attention right now. <laughs> really? Yeah. So I just stopped watching it. So that's something that I'm going to watch when I have the, 
the actual attention span for the movie. Is this something that you think would catch on though? Would you want to do more of interactive TV? It's a good question. It kind of goes back to the smell of vision of the 80s or 90s. Remember that? They want to do like smell of vision. Oh, yes. And I remember like um, Married with Children tried to do like a very interactive type of show. And uh, you got like some cards and it was you could with smell Revenge it. Revenge of the Nerds. You were watching uh, it, with different glasses. It was a whole Fox thing. It was the whole block of Fox. Oh, right, right, right. And yeah. there was a Revenge of the Nerds movie made for TV movie that was going to play along with that also. But okay. There was like a couple episodes of where you use those glasses and the smell things. Yeah. And then yeah, Married with Children was one and there was another one and then afterwards was that movie and they used the glasses and the smell. I remember all that and you had to get it from 7-Eleven, right? Yeah. yeah. I, was, yeah I was thinking I remember that. remember all that. But yeah, 7-Eleven, you had to get it. So... Um, I mean, it obviously didn't catch on. Uh, 3D TVs, I don't think really caught on. It didn't. And and I don't I don't think interactively. I think I think the majority of people though they just want to sit and just be entertained and not have to interact. That is my opinion though. I could be wrong. Love to hear your guys' thoughts about it though. Do you guys remember Smell of Vision? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the 3D TVs didn't really catch on. A lot of people bought them and then they didn't end up using them because you had to buy more things with them. Yeah, I mean, you had to buy, you know, the 3D player. And you, you had the glasses get... and the glasses had a charge. Yeah, oh yeah, the glasses had a charge and they were like 200 bucks each and... and Not um... everything was in 3D. Right, and then someone like me, for example, when I watch TV, I actually have to wear glasses and I didn't want to wear glasses on top of glasses. That's actually a big prohibitor for me from going to 3D movies at the theaters because I'm wearing glasses and I don't want to put glasses on top of glasses. So I try to avoid most of the 3D movies at the theater Actually, too. I've been avoiding the 3D movies at the theater mainly because it costs more and there's really nothing more exciting about the 3D. Like the 3D Good point. part of the movie kind of disappears after the, the opening credits. Okay. Like once you kind of see things moving past, you're like, whoa, whoa. Well, then it's gone after that. After that, yeah. it's kind of like, all right. It's just a regular it's movie. And now that you bring that up, I actually see less 3D options at theaters too. It is. It is. Now that you mention down. that, like for example, when we went to go watch Aquaman, I think they had like just six shows in of the whole week of 3D. It almost seemed like. Yeah, I think 3D is kind of dying out. The the cool factor of it's kind of going away because of how realistic things are. The high definition is now. Yeah. If, is 3D even necessary anymore? You want to hear one of the ideas that I have? What? I don't think it'll ever happen. I don't think I'll take the time to do it. But an idea I always had was was um, the theater. You have your screen in front of you. But then it utilize like half of the walls. Half of the walls along the side. And no action is happening along the walls. It's just more peripheral foreground. Like, you know, you're running through the trees... And it's just more trees along the side. It was just it was just kind of more interactive. Or like when there's a chase scene, like you'll see the car drive along the side. It doesn't really okay. do much, but it just drives along the side along the and then it gets the... involved in front of you. So like half yeah. of the wall of the theater just kind of got um, engaged with more. It was, it was more like a, it was more like a it's peripheral called more a than planetarium. action. Planetarium. What? It's called a planetarium. Planetarium. Yeah. Like when you're watching the world. Yes, and it goes along the walls and the ceiling and everything. <laughs> Oh, the ceiling too. Half of the ceiling. <laughs> you know what I've always wanted ever since I was a kid? And it's actually possible now. Was uh, I always thought of this happening when I was a kid in the future. That TVs were going to be like holographic boxes. Okay. Or a whole room. A whole room was actually going to be like your TV. Where you just sit down and it's a blank white room. But as soon as you turn it on, it all lights up like you're in the studio. Or you're, you're inside like Seinfeld's living room. Okay. And the way the cameras would be set up is there's cameras in 360 view, top, bottom, and everything. So that way you can distribute it and pop it up in a holographic box. Well, you know, it's almost 2020, and I thought there would be a lot more cooler things happening. I know. <laughs> I thought it was going to be on hoverboards by now. Seriously, where are or the, the hover cars? cars? And the flying cars. I thought 2000 would be hoverboards, and 2020 would be hover cars. Boy, did we get screwed. Oh, Dang your TV. On. With how fast things were ramping up, everyone yeah, has like, so many hopes for the 2000s. 
<laughs> it's just like the 80s. What the hell? <laughs> That'd be on a jetpack by now. <laughs> Nothing new. <laughs> Nothing new. <laughs> now, now I get these hoverboards, but they're on wheels. Yeah, what the hell? What kind of ho That's not hovering over shit. And I get jetpacks, but you have to stay in the water. Yeah, what kind of jet is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they have a jetpack. A backpack. Have you seen that guy? Um, or no, it's not a backpack. It's on his feet. He has one jet engine. And that he's standing on. Oh, I think I think I might have. He hauls ass. He's yeah. cruising over the lake. He's just doing it over the lake in case he falls. He can fall in water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's but he's feet. hauling ass. He f goes up like a mile, can fly like 100 miles an hour. Okay. That thing's pretty sweet. I want a commercial, though. I want access to it. I want it. I would take <laughs> one. I think 100,000 to 200,000. Oh, well, I don't want it that bad. Never mind. I'd rather buy a house. <laughs> or a buy another house. I'd buy a plane. With two engines. Oof. <laughs> and and uh, the last thing about Netflix is we just watched A Quiet Place 2, a.k.a. Bird Box. Bird Box. <laughs> so I know you posted on it and got some interaction about it. And um, so first of all, just the movie itself, what did you think? For the movie, for what it was, was entertaining. Okay. It was, it was done okay. And it was, it left a lot of questions unanswered. Yeah, I know, I know Jasmine Manessis uh, mentioned it on, on the Facebook, I believe it was Facebook. Right. And I had the she idea. She was like, what is this, though? Like, I, there, it was, nothing was left. Well, like, it was left. I told you that they were some kind of demons. But you don't they, know. They, they kept they mentioning the word from. creature during the show. But you never see anything. It's almost like they look at something and it takes over their body and they kill themselves. Oh, you spoiled it. Duh. Who hasn't seen it yet? It's your own fault. And <laughs> it's I also in really the trailer. So. <laughs> it's in but the trailer. The things that I didn't understand were the people that didn't kill themselves when they saw it and instead were trying to get other people to see it. They were trying to force other people right. to open their eyes. And they always kind of seem like insane or criminally... Deranged. Yeah. And yeah, so it didn't make sense. Why were these people not killing themselves right away and instead trying to get other people to look? When other people look, all of a sudden they just start killing themselves. So yeah, that part was left unanswered, and where they came from was unanswered. They have the demons, aliens. So a lot of it was left science unanswered, and all of a sudden they get to this place at the end where they're safe, but yet no resolution. Are they, are they really safe? Yeah. So I think they're gonna come There's out with gaps a lot in those more. Lines. I think they're gonna come out with a lot more movies like prequels and sequels. Maybe a, a series. Bird Box? Yeah. They'll probably have different names. Mm. Like, it was only called Bird Box because of that shoe box they carried around the whole time. Hmm. I and because know. the birds had, had something to do with their squawking and these evil things. So, maybe the next movie might be called A Safe Place. Because they think yeah, they're safe. Yeah, who knows? Or but, A Quiet Place 3. <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know, what did you think? Uh, I I like the story. I I, um, I I had heard it was similar to a Quiet Place, and if you guys don't know, that's the John Krasinski and Emily Blunt movie where they couldn't make noise because there was a there was a creature that you could see that would aliens would come. Was after it aliens? I can't remember. It was aliens. It was aliens. So they yeah. basically, if they heard noise, they'd come after whatever that made the noise and, and kill and eat. But otherwise, they couldn't really see. Is what I, I kind of got. And so yeah. if you were quiet, they never bothered you. Um, so I know it was like, there was a premise where with bird boxes, you couldn't see it or else you, you would couldn't kill yourself outside. Yeah. And, um, so I, I kind of knew that, uh, kind of, it was kind of prefaced to me. So I, I try to ignore the movie quiet place when I watched it. It was hard to ignore, uh, knowing a lot of the same parallels, mm -hmm. but, um, I liked the story. I like kind of the story. I I did kind of feel unsatisfied without a resolution at the end, or the the unknown at the end. But I know you you commented on someone's response on social media, and you said maybe it's because they're trying to leave an opening for a sequel or or a prequel. Yeah, that's a or a sequel with flashbacks. But that that would be my guess: a sequel with flashbacks. Yeah, I, I think they left it open on purpose so they could make more movies and capitalize on this. They, they, they did, did garner in a, a pretty decent cast, you know. They had uh, well, yeah, I think Sandra Bullock what, was the lead that's, actress. I think that's what got them all the views. Yeah. Because, I mean, look at... What was that She's movie? still a draw. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
Well, look at the one that Will Smith made on Netflix called Bright. Oh yeah, it was a bad movie, but it got really yeah, it wasn't good yeah, it wasn't good views, so it got it got a second movie coming out. They're gonna have a second movie because of all the views they got. Okay, and they got all the views because of Will Smith. Yeah, if it wasn't Will Smith, they probably would not. It would have bombed. If bad. it was Jaden Smith, it would have bombed. If it was Jaden <laughs> Smith, it would have bombed so bad. <laughs> So anyway, I know that's the big talk. So what we want to talk about here, that was the big talk for the last two weeks was probably Bird Box. I mm -hmm. was seeing it all over. Uh, a lot of people saying it was good. Like I said, I liked the story. I think it was it was entertaining. It was a uh, it was an okay story, and it was it was done pretty good. But have you seen that meme saying that the 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 most popular names for 2019 is going to be boy and girl? It won't. But it's, <laughs> it's funny. But I hope no. <laughs> Yeah, it was kind of a weird, it, what I didn't really, one thing that kind of bugged me throughout the movie was how she was not, she was like, almost like, disassociating herself from her pregnancy almost. Well, I think she was disassociated from, from life in general, like she lived alone and she painted and all of her paintings were dark. And she didn't, you know, she never went out. Her sister came to visit her and brought her groceries and she never talked to her mom and so the whole movie, like, w during the whole scene, she always sat by herself. And if you notice, like, the contrast of her clothes were always, like, a blue color. And her blindfold was blue. So I think they were just kind of painting her that the whole time. And you're kind of almost like, gosh, what a bitch. Yeah. Till the end. And now they feel safe. And she's finally like, okay, you know what? One of, one of, I've almost lost these kids. And, uh, you know what? I think I love them. <laughs> <laughs> so you now get names. Yep, your name is the. <laughs> yeah. You will be known as this. I know you're 10, but now you will have a name. <laughs> so, so, yeah, otherwise she called them boy and girl throughout the whole movie. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Cause, but yeah, her attitude in the movie was just a little off. But other than that, it was, it was a pretty good movie. Yeah, it was good. I'll watch the sequel. We'll if see they what make happens. it. Because normally by now, they would have announced if they're going to make one, right? I don't know. Because normally when weeks. they make a, a movie for Netflix and it does really well, they'll announce it right away that they got the okay for a, hmm. a sequel. So yeah, we'll see what that. happens. If they don't come out with a sequel to this, then I'm going to hate this movie. <laughs> because of all the unanswered questions. It's a lot of unanswered. Because right now I'm leaving it. Okay, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that they're going to come back and answer all these questions. But if they don't, then screw you guys. I hate the movie. It'll be, it'll be interesting. See what happens. <laughs> Do you have anything else? Um, any ghost stories? Any ghostly things? UFOs? Um, I, I, I mean, I don't get much onto our social media accounts. So I don't know if you've seen any come in. Um, but I don't have any recent ones. Um, I don't have any new stories, but I can tell you one of my own. That okay. just happened. So I have a ghost in my house. Why do you say that? Because I do. It's a little boy. His name's Julian. Wait, where, where do you come up with this? Well, uh, you don't know about Julian? No. Okay, so he's a little boy. He, uh... Am I supposed to know about Julian? I thought I told you about no, him. No, you haven't. Okay, so he doesn't live in my house. I mean, you've you mentioned this... All, everything you said right now is all you've kind of mentioned to me. But we didn't get into detail yet. Okay, so this spirit... He doesn't reside in my house. He just pops in him every now and then. And when he does, I'll I'll know I'll feel him there and I'll know he's there. Okay. And I know exactly where he, he hangs out. So he's a drifter. Yes. He kind of he died somewhere in the area and he kind of pops in house to house. Okay. And he hangs out on my stair landing, the middle of my oh, stairs. Okay. He hangs out there. It's dark right there. Mhm. Mm and I always I always felt something there. I always would always look over there because I always felt something there. Okay. And at first, for a while, I thought it was my spirit guide kind of watching over the house, watching over me in the house. Well, one day, Brandy was over at the house. Brandy, who was a medium who can see spirits and interact with them at like, like a person standing there. Okay, you did tell me this part. Okay. So she was over at the house and she was sitting on the couch. And I noticed her looking over at that stair landing. And I go... Do you see him standing there? She's like, yep, he's there. And I asked her, is that my spirit guide? She's like, no, it's a little boy. Hmm. So she starts talking to him and she goes, his name's Julian. He he doesn't live here. He lives somewhere like kind of, she kind of motions towards the apartments near my house. Okay. 
she's like, he's over there somewhere, but he pops into different houses, but he likes it here. Because I'll burn incense or candles, and she said that he really likes the scents that I have. Okay. So he'll pop in every now and then. And uh, one day, I was sitting on the couch, and I kept noticing, I kept feeling him over there. And I'd look over, and I would almost see something zoom up the stairs. Okay. And I'm like, he's playing with me right now. Every time I look over, it's like he shoots up the stairs. Like, he's getting closer and closer to me. Okay. Well, I stopped paying attention, and I was watching something. And as I'm sitting there, the back of my head gets played with. Oh, really? I was like, oh, Julie, get your ass upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> get on that landing. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah, he, it was funny that day. He was playing with it. So I snapped a picture of the stair landing. And I send it to her. I'm all, hey, is, uh, you see, do you see Julian in here? And she goes, yep, there he is at the top of the stair landing. And I told her what he was doing. And she goes, yeah, he's he's most likely just playing with you today. Hmm. He's trying to interact with you more. Yeah. But it was pretty nuts because I was seeing him, like, zooming up the stairs. And it was so weird because you don't see it with your eyes. Okay. Like, I look over and I can see it, but I don't. It, it, it's so hard to explain. It, it, without somebody knowing what you're talking about, it is so hard to explain that I'm not physically seeing it zoom up the stairs, but in my mind's eye, I guess is what you call it, I see a uh, something zooming up. Okay. But uh, but it was so funny that once once I stopped paying attention to it because I was involved with what was happening on TV, it was almost like he was getting frustrated with me because I wasn't playing with him anymore, and he started tickling my hair. Ah. It was pretty nuts. Well, you actually, okay, now let me tell you, I actually, you telling me that story just reminded me of a story I actually heard last night, so I should have remembered this. <laughs> I heard this last night. So I actually was um, uh, on an appointment, and um, you actually know this person. You, I, I don't even told you, because I just got this story last <laughs> night, but it was I was with Jessica Ortiz. Oh, okay. And she lives near me. I know, I actually just saw her for the first time. In probably 20-something years, last month. So I was over at her house yesterday and uh, with her and her husband. And and she was telling me a story that one of her daughters would say she would see a gentleman. And, and that he would um, talk and play with her. So she's telling, she's telling Jessica this. And so she's like, what the heck? So she's, so it wasn't the same day. I believe it was a different day, but she was walking out of the kid's room and walked out into her living room. It was nighttime and it was dark, but she seemed to seemed extra dark, like a heavy dark. And then she was like, oh, hell no. All right, you better leave me alone. You better get out of here. Leave my family alone. And then all of a sudden the smoke detector goes low battery and she dropped to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> scared the hell out of her <laughs> um, <laughs> so she thinks that she's yelling at a ghost and low battery she, she you know, obviously she just hears the voice and drops to the floor the smoke detector scared the bejesus out of her <laughs> trying to be brave yeah <laughs> but she has been seeing a gentleman a shadow with a hat pacing around uh, in front of her door Really? And uh, her husband has also, he wants to deny it because she says he's scared that, uh, you know, people think he's crazy. And I said, listen, bro, I'm the last person to think you're crazy. And um, he's also heard his name said. So oh. so that's the story I heard last night. Why I forgot that, I don't know. Probably because it was like 10 p.m. when I heard it. You know what? Just... That sounds like, uh, doesn't because their home is pretty new. It's a new neighborhood. 2001, I want to say it was built, she said. And so it is were, new. Were they the first owners? No, I want to say third, but I'm not a hundred percent. I did ask, but I, I think it, she's the third. Did they say if this was something new? This is new happening, or is it always um, been happening? It. So they've only been there four years, three or four years, mm -hmm. and so I got the impression it started. She didn't tell me, actually. I didn't ask. That's, I should have asked. But I, I, this is the impression I got. It was maybe a year after moving in, maybe. I wonder if it has to be an attachment to the husband, if it knows his name and called his name. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's somebody that he knows. I told him we can come over and sage the place if they wanted, so. 
said, let us know. I said, me and Dale will come over. We'll save save your house. So no problem there. Yeah. So yeah, interesting. I just heard last night. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, no it, and it's funny too. It's a funny and I know. And, uh, creepy. Just story. imagine trying to be brave and then hear something and just and totally it's pitch black, out. right? And you hear the voice. <laughs> you just hear a voice, but it's just, just slow battery. Hit the yeah. ground, <laughs> slap. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! She did tell me. Oh, she did tell me um, um, that she was laying. I said, I think she said she was sitting or laying on the couch, and she heard a noise. And and uh, I don't have a cup here, but. She heard a noise. She looked over, and a water bottle was like rotating on the table. Oh. Like it was standing upright, but it was kind it of was like kinda rocking. Like, like somebody tapped it, and it was kind of yes, like... yeah. Or they just like kind of dropped it real quick, and just kind of was just kind of yeah, kind of settling in. Ooh. So yeah, she did hear that, and um, definitely sounds like someone's trying to get their attention. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> Talking with the kids, saying the husband's name, pacing wonder... around the door. Somebody close to the husband that's passed away recently. Could be. Yeah, it's, it's pretty well, that interesting. That wears a hat. Yeah, it wears maybe, a hat. They need to look into that. It's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, have her call us. All right. We'll go bust some ghosts. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, guys. Thanks for listening or watching. Whatever you're doing, just thanks for having us part of your day. All right. And then here we go. 2019, more Buko Boys coming at you. All right. Peace out. Bye, everybody.